But look at it. I don't know how you live with yourself, but you won't have to for long. Fixing the world, one scoundrel at a time. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Akshan once again, and that is because I want to show you a new build, and this is actually the best build for him right now. Um, his win rate is pretty low because people are using the wrong build, but this unhit build, guys, is his best possible scaling build he has. It's gonna make his late game so insane as well. If you use the crit build, then he's very strong in the early game and the mid game, but he's gonna fall off afterwards. With this build, you're gonna scale so well. So the runes are pretty similar. You are using press the attack. That is the best uh, keystone on him. He can proc it really easily because of his passive, double auto attack and passive, and also his C. So that is the best uh, keystone on him. But of course, you can use conquer as well if you want to. In the early game guys, make sure that you abuse that Q, um, remember that the range will be extended when it has to pass through enemy minions and such, so you can actually hit champions even though they are hiding super far behind the minion wave. So just uh, auto attack poke and that second auto attack you don't always have to use it if you want to kite people you know run back and forth then you just use that one auto attack. You can use that W to gang up on people keep in mind the detection radius is pretty big. This is pretty much how you want to play uh, this champion guys, it's like an assassin, it's an AD carry but also an assassin. The goal is to use that W, you know, stay nearby walls because then you get permanent stealth. And you do see that circle um, going down when you leave walls and that's kind of displaying the time you have left in that stealth um, mode. So. Stay nearby walls and also in brushes you get that permanent stealth and that's gonna make you really really good at roaming. Also that E feels insanely satisfying to use, just keep in mind that if you use it in tight places then you don't really have that much room to uh, move around and if you do collide with something then it's gonna cancel out so it's not very good for escaping um, in fights and such when you are inside the jungle. But it does reset on takedowns, so you can jump in, get a kill, and then jump out again. So it is pretty fun to use. When you go for trades early on, really play around that press T attack because that's gonna give you some extra burst damage. Try to poke with that Q. It can hit twice, so you can get that passive proc off, off really fast. Also, that shield you get from your passive is super important as well. Cool thing is that um, your E can proc that press the attack insanely fast. Like really really fast, but you want to make use of it when there are no minions blocking because um, the way your E targets enemy units is pretty weird. Um, it's gonna target the minions as well when you try to get to enemy champions. So if you make sure that there are nothing in between, then you're gonna get a lot of extra bonus damage.
And of course, if you did watch my previous video, then um, uh, this revive passive is pretty OP. It's not that useful early on. It's mostly meant for the mid and late game, where the death timers are super high when you're going to play around objectives and such. And if your teammates suddenly die, then you have the opportunity to revive them if you kill the target that took down your allies. You can only do it once though. Typically you want to prioritize the target that took down like 3-4 uh, members of your team so you can revive all of them at once. Got the ultimate up. Remember that it can be body blocked by pretty much everything so it actually has a lot of damage but it feels like a weaker Caitlyn ultimate. Because they can just hide behind the towers and then your ultimate will be blocked. The tower will take damage, but I even Skull Crab's minions can also block it. So I think they need to buff this part, but everything else about him is so OP. Look at this insane roaming potential guys and also if you um, go into that W chase down the target that kill your allies then you get that extra bit of um, speed so you can run them down but even this W is going to be on a much much slower cooldown late game so you can go into this permanent stealth just keep in mind look at the detection radius and see how big it is so it's very easy to spot you if you get close. So this is the problem right here as you can see, if people know um, of it by now but you can easily block his ultimate by hiding behind the tower so when you use it, make sure that they don't have anything to hide behind. So that second auto attack is useful when you want to push because you get that extra damage off. In short trades, when you want to kite around, then you only use that first auto attack. You can see I am using that W a lot because this champion is a combination of an assassin and an AD carry. You want to abuse that W, get those rooms off, pick up these kills and if some of your teammates died, then you can also revive them. So it is a champion that's good at turning around fights. Play around the objectives as well. My bot lane is helping out Volibear, that's why I just went straight to the wave so I don't lose all of the XP here. Problem is, Anemia is level 6 right now, so this is where the AFK pushing playstyle begins, and that's not very fun to play against, especially if you play a roaming champ. You want to go for the uh, kills when possible. When you engage on Anemia, you want to make sure that her Q is down. Because that is the only ability she has to really uh, stop you. Because her W doesn't really do much unless she has the Q up. So if her Q is down, that's when you can engage onto her. Make sure that there are no enemy champions close to her. She could be trying to bait you out as well. So we need to base really soon because we are super low on mana. And as you can see, you don't really build mana items, even though you get that bonus mana regen from your passive, then um, you don't really have any mana, and that's why Presence of Mind is such a crucial keystone. 
On top of that, you also get the Lithium Bloodline, so you get uh, a lot of lifesteal as well, and that is very good on this on hit build because you don't really get lifesteal items until later on. We will be building towards the Kraken Slayer, of course, that is the highest. Um, DPS item for 80 carries to get that true damage and of course we are playing a scaling build. It's gonna be decent early game but super strong in the mid and late game. Like insanely strong in the mid and late game. I just try to abuse that um, W whenever possible so use that Q and hit the entire enemy minion wave. Combine that with your passive and you should be able to push out decently fast. Pushing does feel a lot better once you get a couple items, um, because you deal a lot more damage and then you pretty much one shot the minions with just one auto attack and that passive auto attack. You see that insane amount of damage right now, that is the Presti attack combined with your passive. And of course you can proc that multiple times on a single opponent, so your DPS is actually pretty insane. Can't really use the ultimate here because she's just gonna hide behind the tower, so we're gonna save that. And you can also wait like this guys, and if the opponent thinks you based or roamed, then they will walk up and then you can also look for a kill that way. Always look at the detection radius of your stealth passive um, because it is very easy to spot you. They don't even have to be close in order for them to see you. And it is a good thing it's this way because otherwise this would have been insanely broken. That's a herald on the wall bear, so just looking to break open the mid side. I misplayed a bit right here, should have saved the flash for his ultimate. But they are winning this fight easily, so they can actually, or they should be able to take down the mill tower without issues. You do want to force some early fights when you play Akshan, um, you want to snowball yourself. You do get bonus gold on these takedowns. We do have the Kraken Slayer and the Berserker, so this is another big power spike, you get that. Kraken auto attack passive off faster because of your passive. So if you play the highest DPS or you want to play the highest DPS build on Akshan, then this is the one you want to be using. Just push the waves and then you just look for rooms. It's like playing an assassin. Just a ranged assassin pretty much. That scales better than usual assassins because you build crit items and you can also build um, on hit. Go into that W right there um, so people don't spot you and then you can just roam all the way if you want to. It's a bit unfortunate that she is gonna escape like this, um, but as you can see your E isn't really that strong in the um, enemy jungle. But you need to make sure that you don't collide with terrain or champions. You have to walk really close to a wall before you can use it and then you don't really get to cover that much distance. So it's not good for chasing and it's also not good for escaping in the jungle. We did run it down, but we are also getting the drake, so we're not really losing much. You can use that E to get back into lane faster.
That fall can be a pretty big problem if you play Immobile Champs. Thing is, if Anivia uses that wall, then we could just use that to swing around with in our E, so it can actually end up um, helping us out if she uses it in some cases. Need to be careful because even though you can assassinate people, you're also very squishy. So if you play against someone with a lot of burst, then you definitely want to be careful. Because if it's an actual assassin, then they're gonna burst you down much faster than you can burst them down. That shield from your passive is incredibly useful guys. As you can see that ultimate damage is also pretty nice. If we can get all the shots onto somebody then um, we can also end up carrying the fight. This Tristana is getting extremely lucky this game. This multiple uh, times she survived for like almost no HP. So the thing is, if you play against uh, multiple AP champs, for example you play against an AP mid laner and an AP jungler, then you can go for Witsend as your very first item before you get the uh, mythic item. Witsend is really OP right now, extremely OP, and it also completely denies AP assassin and AP champs. So you can go for that as your first item if you play against Multiple OP opponent, AP opponents, or AP mid and AP jungle. Now the Q easily one shot the backline minions. Just need to make sure that it hits both of them. Look at that damage. That is pretty insane. For this champ and we also have a Yumi on top of us, so our late game is going to be even better. I had to fly out right here because I'm, uh, if I got stunned then they could just collapse onto me and then maybe kill me. Maybe I would have survived, I don't know, but I don't want to take any risks. And just like that, we managed to turn the fight around pretty easily. Just always keep in mind that you're playing AD carry, so you are squishy, even though you have to assassinate people. So when you engage or go for assassinations, you want to make sure that if they have any kind of hard CC, then bait that out first. Even if you can't bait it out, then just wait patiently in the sights. And maybe let one of your teammates fade it out, and once it did so, that's when you can engage. That volley bear went down pretty fast. A bit unfortunate, but now we do have enough gold for the Ginsu, so this is where the fun part begins. Even though your ultimate skills will crit, it's not really that effective guys, so... Doesn't really matter, um, because a lot of the times you don't really get to use it off cooldown because it is so easy to block, so you really have to be patient with it. So it means that a lot of times you just end up saving it until you are 100% sure that it can actually help you out. So our team got destroyed right there, and they're gonna go for the Drake. Unless somebody overextends, then we can't really do anything right here because um, it is a hard carry chain, but those 1 vs 3s, uh, it is not a Yasuo. Got 
got the Ginsu Trace Blade, so all attacks now, crits and such will be converted into bonus on hit, so it's getting converted into guaranteed damage and now we're gonna go for the Wits End because they had great synergy with the Ginsu Trace Blade and it also makes AP Jams deal less damage to us. Planavia and Lux won't be that good against us anymore. So just looking to surprise people all the time with that W, even if you are in the laning phase in our early game, you can still use that W when they're in the lane. You can use that when you come from the base and then you can try to get a flank off, of course, only if you can win the fights. If it's a 50-50, then don't risk it because um, if you fall behind on this jam, then he's not very useful. That ultimate is so satisfying to use if you can get kills with it. If they don't hide behind something and you get the last hit, then it feels so good to use. And even better if that ultimate also gives you that revive on your teammates when you get that takedown. When you are doing the Baron though guys, then you can just stand still so you get that pass or attack off as well. No reason to move around. When you have all of this attack speed, then it feels very satisfying with that passive auto attack as well. Because in the early game, it is very awkward to use because it comes out so slow, but right now it's insanely fast, so... At this point in the game, it feels so much better. We still need a bit more gold for that wit send. Once we have that, then that's an even better, a bigger power spike. So we can go for assassinations right now. For example, if the Tristana just fucked up thinking that she's alone, then we can go for assassination. Want to get as close as possible before you do so because I'm. Uh, Otherwise, you have very short order attack range, so they can cut you or just run away. You can just wait in the corners like this right here, wait for them to walk up, thinking it's a 1 versus 2, and then you can surprise them like this, so there are many different ways you can use that W. And she just got blasted just like that. Just the insane damage you have on Akshan. And I should definitely have used my ultimate right here. The thing is, I did not know if somebody was coming to body block it. At first I thought that she would die to the burn. But she didn't. And then afterwards I was thinking that she had somebody with her. So I did not use it. But I should have done that at the start. Now we have enough gold for the wit scent, but our team wants us to stay so we can't really recall. We'll just go for a fight right here. And this descent is gonna get shredded. Absolutely shredded with all of that on hit damage and if they build a ton of armor then we can also go for the Lord Dominics. So it's even more fun if you have a Yumi, of course it's rare, you don't get to play with a Yumi every single game, but if you do have so, then you're gonna scale even better, because she's gonna amplify your damage. That's a really nice block by the Sonya Sideglass and the Tristan as well. It's really fun that this Z resets on takedown, so you can use it to kill somebody and then you just get out again.
So Yumi typically sits on the most fit guy on the team and that is of course me because she wants to amplify that guy, make him deal even more damage and also protect him so he can deal damage for as long as possible. So when I go into that W, really nice to have Yumi with me as well because of course she will also go into stealth. Similar to if she was sitting on a Twitch. Now we have the power spike, so these are the core items. You'll be getting these every single game with this build. Because this is the big power spike right now. This is a massive power spike, you have the Kraken Slayer, you have the Ginsus, and you have the Witsend as well. That's why you really want to fight, go for assassinations, you have insane amount of DPS, so just want to force fights all the time. Now, if you want even more on hit, then you can go for Blade of the Ruined King. I'm gonna go for um, Bloodthirster this game here. For some extra sustain. And also that shield can also be pretty useful. They don't have any Serpent's Fang, so it's fine. Damage is ridiculous, and they don't have anyone to block it with. So Lux is gonna go down and same for Trisana and Wallabear is back alive. There you are. Back. It's very very fun to play at this stage of the game. And just look at that damage as well guys and we're also gonna heal. And down he goes, so Lee Sin is also down. And we just run it down as well because we face Fasiac the Graves and he also has a lot of burst damage. We are trying out the Bloodthirster here and of course it also gives crit so it's gonna amplify the Ginsu's. If you want to, you can easily go for Blade of the Ruin King as well. Um, it has, it also has great synergy with the um, on-hit build. It's gonna give you some nice bonus movement speed as well on top of your passive with the Blade of the Ruin King, but it does have a cooldown, so it's not something you can use permanently. Uh, Bloodthirst though, on the other hand, you get that shield once you heal up to full, and that can potentially um, save you from getting bursted down. So they are fighting without me and that's of course a very big mistake guys because I am the most fit member on the team so they should have waited for me. Now they ended up getting almost aced. I also ended up dying right here. Um, we only managed to revive the Yumi and that's not really going to do a whole lot. You know when you're in fights in a 1 vs 1 for example, um, let's say Darius is chasing you then you don't really want to use that second auto attack because you prioritize the bonus movement speed instead. So you auto attack him and then kite for the bonus movement speed then auto attack him again. Constantly kite him like this because you don't really have CC. So you are very reliant on your mobility to kite people, especially something like a Darius. In that case, you don't really have to use your second auto attack unless you're just gonna straight win it. Well, this is embarrassing. We did end up giving them a pretty big lead with the Baron because um, we did not wait for all five members, so that's why if you want to fight, we have to group. And then we have to play around me and the Yumi, so she has to sit on me and then we try to burst them down. And the Yumi knows this, that's why she's coming to me right here. I'm just trying to flank with the W. Get as close as possible before you use anything because you really want to get into the backline. 
find people and then try to assassinate someone even better if it's gonna revive some of your teammates there's an insane amount of uh, burst damage graves has but this ended up reviving the Mordekaiser And this is gonna end up in a really nice pentakill. So yes, Akshan is pretty fun to play if you can get that first early takedown. You're just gonna swing around with that E resetting all the time. Pick up people trying to run away with that E and your ultimate. And that ended up in a really, really clean uh, pentakill. We are sitting on a lot of gold and people are also building armor so you can go for the Lord Dominix right here. If you want you can also build Blade of the Ruin King. But Anemia has the Sonya Sourglass and I suspect that a lot more people will start building armor because I am this fit so. Going for that armor pin and then of course all that crit also gets converted into even more damage. So we are getting even more damage from the Lord Dominix uh, right now. And that Lux just got blasted. There's no way for her to survive and did end up overextending a little bit and that Lee kick really screwed us over so should have been a bit more patient and not really go that deep. But our teammates are alive so that's completely fine and we also have that soul. That's gonna feel really nice when you use that ultimate because you can you have an easier time to reposition while using that ultimate so maybe you can avoid having your ultimate body blocked But it is extremely fun that this um, uh, game went to the late game because then you can really show what the champion is capable of. In this season it is very rare that um, games go this far, um, typically it ends around the 25 to 30 minute mark, most of the time even earlier actually so this is one of the rare games where you can actually show what the champion can do if you get to this stage of the game. Just trying to get a flank off here, um, really abuse that W if you can. Wait until you are as close as possible and if you can bait out CC abilities then that's even better. Decent did end up wasting his ultimate right here because he failed the insect and that's gonna end up costing his life so their front line is pretty much down. So now we can just engage all the way if we want to. Our ADC also went down so that blows quite a bit actually. I'm gonna go on that W invisibility, wait for somebody to extend. And he got blasted just like that. So if you get a takedown, then you can easily chase down the other people as well. Because your E is gonna reset, so you just run them down all the way. And Wallbear got that kill as well, so four members on that team down, so that's gonna allow us to break open the base and then we can keep Advancing our lead.
We're not quite able to end the game just yet because um, we don't have enough people with us and they're going to slowly respawn and they can also just delete the wave instantly so we have to go for the objectives if we get the Baron then we can easily end the game. So before you do Baron you can also sit in your W if you wanted to you know try to sit in the, in the enemy jungle if a squishy target walks up trying to ward the Baron Pit, then you can get a quick assassination and then you can get out. We took down the Baron really fast, of course we have a lot of damage. We had two AD carries. We are full build as well, so we can't really buy anything else. Just keep buying the red pots. And then we just want to group. The Elder Drake is also spawning soon. And that's the AD carry O extending, and that's a bit unfortunate. He should have waited for us because um, you don't walk that far up when you're alone and playing an immobile champ. And we got that takedown on the Lux as well, so Jin is gonna respawn. And that Yumi heal is also extremely useful, so we pretty much um, lead most of the team, just picking up the remaining members, and then we can go straight for the end. So this guys is what Akshan is capable of in the late game. Of course, I'm also really fed this game, but at this point, people already have a lot of items. A lot of people are full build or close to, so. This is a really good game to show what this champion can do even in the later stages. I hope this was helpful, as always see you guys in the next one.